Hello and welcome to Tushka Training. Uh, today we're back in HitFilm 2 Ultimate. We're going to be looking at some procedural bullet holes. These are very simple bullet holes, uh, but depending on what you need and the size that bullet holes tend to be, uh, they can be very effective, very fast to do, and um, procedural, so you can do them over and over again. You can seed them and you can change them wherever you see fit, so they're, they're not all the same. Um, we will advance this tutorial with a second part at some point where we have some animated uh, particles and shatter effects coming off this bullet hole but for now we just wanted to do the bullet holes because uh, nine times out of ten when you're doing this you don't need the shatter or the particles because it's such a rapid effect you can just go with the bullet holes themselves um, and rather than using imagery which is the standard way of doing it, I suppose. Um, using a procedural method is quite cool and is quite fast and it just gives you another idea uh, of, of a way to work things out and, and maybe just t take a sideways glance at some of the effects you're trying to achieve without going to imagery. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a composite. Um, we're going to call this composite shot, we'll call this... Um, We'll call it the shot container. This is going to be a, a containing a composite for the entire shot. And what we'll do now is we'll import uh, an image, uh, which is this image here. I just wanted something that actually had a wall on it. Um, we're going to shrink it down to size so it's kind of frame size. That'll do. Um, and then we're going to create a new composite shot and we will call this a bullet hole container um, rather than go the 1920 20, uh, 1080 uh, you can pull it down to whatever size you want uh, the this sort of effect you could probably pull it down to uh, 320 320 um, we'll, we'll go with something custom we'll, we'll just go with uh, 320 320 just because it's uh, the first thing I said um, you don't really have to worry about size uh, in terms of bullet holes simply because they're so small on screen at any given moment. So um, what we're going to do here now is we're going to create a new layer in the bullet hole container and we will call this noise surround. Uh, we're going to go to uh, generate and grab a fractal noise and drag that down onto the plane so that we've got a, a noise plane like so. Then we're going to grab the mask tool, the draw mask tool, and we're just going to draw a mask. Very simply, very random, not thinking too much about it. You can think about it more if you've got a particular shot you're trying to achieve. Um, but... In this particular instance, I just want something done fast, and there it is. I'm going to feather it at the edge a tiny bit like so. And now I've done that, I'm actually going to grab the circular masking tool, and I'm going to draw a circular mask directly on top of this as well. Now, I don't know if you noticed there, but no matter how I drag this, it's doing a perfect circle. That's because I'm holding down the shift key on the keyboard. Um, if I take my finger off the shift key, you'll see that I can actually move it anywhere and create all kinds of circular shapes. But as soon as I put my finger back on the shift key, I get a perfect circle, which is ideal for me at the moment. I'm going to go back to the select tool and then move the mask to wherever I need the mask to be. Okay, on this particular mask, we're going to change it to darken so that it actually adds to the original mask. And then we're going to invert it. So now we've got our perfect circle in the actual noise plane, in the actual noise surround I should say. So then we're going to bring that mask properties up and we're going to feather that off a little bit. Uh, on the other as well we'll round it out a tiny bit like so. Um, now one thing we want to do is we're going to create a new plane here, we're going to make this white and we're going to call this plane the test background. We will be deleting this, but for now it's nice to have a background to work against with the bullet hole. Um, as you can see, there's actually a hole completely in the middle of this here. So what we need to do now is we want to create another new plane. Uh, we're going to make this one black, and we'll call this one Black Surround. So we'll create that, we're going to drop it down below the other, and then we are going to um, 
we are going to copy this first mask and paste it onto the black surround like so and then we're going to bring this mask property up we're going to use the expansion control just to grow this mask ever so slightly out like this which gives a, 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 a black surround to the original uh, noise noise surround that we created. I'm going to feather it a little bit more. This just gives it a little bit of an edge when you're actually using it in your finished composite uh, that you wouldn't normally have. Uh, but on top of this, I want to be able to use the opacity controls later on um, on the black surround and on the noise. Uh, but the problem with using opacity controls, uh, like you will see here, is that if I use the opacity control on this particular layer right now, but when I bring the opacity down, you'll see that the black in the center starts to become gray, which isn't the effect we're looking for, but we still want to use these opacity controls to get the exact look we want on our final composite shot. So the next thing we want to do is we want to create another new plane, and we're going to call this bullet hole center. Now we're going to, cre we're going to copy the second mask from our original noise surround we're going to paste that onto the bullet hole center and we will drag this down now underneath all the others turn those off quickly now you'll see that it isn't actually there and that's because it's darkened and inverted if i bring it back like so we'll see that it's actually there now um, I can turn off the test background like so and we can actually add one of these into the shot I'll take the bullet hole container again over here pulled straight into the scene and it's going to be a little bit big but that's not a problem because we can just transform that down um, let's try 10% uh, maybe a little bit a little bit small there. Uh, let's try 20%. Possibly a little bit big, but it will do for now. Um, as you can see, it's fairly effective, probably even more effective on metal. Um, but what we can do is we can start playing with the opacities, like I mentioned earlier. So if we um, if we were to bring the opacities down, so we bring this opacity down to about. 55 or thereabouts and the black surround we're going to bring the opacity down again somewhere below 55 and we're starting to get something of a, a semblance of a bullet hole and with a, a little bit of the original wall shading coming through it's there's plenty of things you can mess with if you need to to uh, make these look more effective um, but they're, they're not too bad. They're not too bad for a, for a quick bullet hole effect. Um, with the actual noise plane, uh, the opacity is not as important as actually messing with the noise itself. Uh, you can mess with the noise. Um, emboss is quite a nice effect if you're using it on a wall. You tend to get kind of a nice effect there. Um, I'll bring the opacity back up a bit so we can check it a little bit further. Yeah, that's that's not a bad effect there. Um, if I duplicate this, like so, all I have to do is drag it over. It would help if I duplicated the bullet hole, I suppose. Uh, duplicating the background is not actually going to get me too far. Um, I'm going to drag this over to about here. Uh, for some reason, my uh, transform tool has disappeared oh, because the, the uh, playhead is not on the actual item. So we'll just drag it over and then we'll duplicate this again. And we'll drag this over and down and across. And we'll duplicate it again. And we'll drag this down and across and we'll duplicate it again 
and I'll drag it down and across. Um, now with these bullet holes here, we're gonna just drag them over a little bit, and drag it over a little bit again. Now if we uh, preview this, the thing is with these bullet holes as well, because they're procedural, you're not actually using an image, and because you're not using an image, you can go back in uh, and create extra, uh, rather than actually duplicating the, uh, con the container here within this composite, you could duplicate it in your media browser, drag it in, make some modifications to the mask and so on, uh, and then when you actually uh, re-trigger the, um, the uh, bullet hole on a different layer, you will actually have a different bullet hole. But nine times out of ten, this is such a fast shot, that uh, it's not that important. A bullet hole is a bullet hole is a bullet hole. It's just going to work, and that's that. It's as simple as that. Um, you just move the items like this to change the timing, uh, as you'll see here. I've just completely sped that animation up, literally just by moving the items. And I can pull it back, preview it. So if it's something like a like a machine gun, you can uh, pull the items right in, so you get a very rapid effect, like so. All your timing is governed by where the items actually are within this uh, shot container. And there you have some bullet holes that have just been shot in that wall. Quite effective. Um, you can change the blacks around to be a, a different color or actually have different layer properties. You can have all kinds of different stuff. But if for a quick shot, um, this is going to work quite well. And like I say, if you duplicate the container over here in your media browser, rather than just duplicating straight on the timeline, if you duplicate it here and then drag it in so it's actually its own brand new container, you can then open it up and you can change the mask ever so slightly um, and change the settings ever so slightly of various different things to make them all individual hits. But as you can see, if this is done rapidly, like it has been done here, bam, 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 you're probably going to cut to a different shot or it's, it's not something that's vastly important in your scene but can still sell a scene if you need it to. So uh, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, remember to hit subscribe if you want to see some more and I'll see you on the next tutorial.